Good evening, Vancouver. Welcome back to Canucks After Dark, November 13th, a Monday coming off of a Canucks road trip where uh, things took a bit of a, a bit of a rocky turn. Um, a 16 shot win in there as well. And the, the Canucks go two and one and everything's totally fine. As always, joined by my co-host, Canuck Clay. How are you doing this week, Clay? Parker, I'm great. Thank you. It feels like I haven't seen you in a long time. And I realize it's because I haven't seen you in a long time. You ran solo without me last week, had your biggest show ever. So I'm not sure what that says about uh, about me, but I'm okay. I have a good self-esteem. I'm happy to be back. And uh, we were like ships crossing in the night, on even on uh, Game Over Vancouver too. So happy mm-hmm. to be here. That's it the, was that's our, it was our, it was only our, it was our second biggest show. We had oh. a, we've had a bigger one when Jim what? Benning got fired. Was I on that one? Oh, I hope so. Uh, I, I, I think so. Okay, just making yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That was a big one. Yeah, no, you were there. Awesome. I'm uh, great. How are you? How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm tired. It, I long weekend and somehow I didn't get enough rest. Uh, but oh. um, no, I'm uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be talking about a, a successful week for the Canucks that had a frustrating middle, uh, but a good start and a good end. Yes. Uh, two and one. On the road trip, I think we don't, we take it. It just yeah, the, it just happens that the game they laid the egg was the one on national TV against the the beloved Toronto Maple Leafs. But beggars can't be choosers, right, Parker? We're we're eleven three and one or whatever. Like I, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, the points don't count any extra in that one. They felt like yeah. they did. Um, I know, I know. Thing is, I don't think that actually that game wasn't even on CBC. <laughs> that uh, oh, really? the Canucks lease one. It was the Habs Bruins on CBC. Um, the actual national game. And I saw people speculating, oh, sports is trying to push subscribers, like try to get people into the, to actually have to pay for the Leafs game. But, um, oh, weird. Yeah. It happens Bruin that had Shorty, Dan Murphy, and Cheech on it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Weird. Weird bizarre. stuff, man. Weird stuff. Very bizarre. <laughs> All right. Should we talk about these three games? Let's, uh, we'll talk about these three games. That'll be one thing we do. Uh, yep. we will also preview the games coming up. Uh, and we'll talk about anything else that happened this week. Uh, we have Jack Stanika getting waived, uh, which is something for us to, to chat about, um, with the Carson Susie injury that seemed to have occurred last game. Uh, yeah. very scary moment as him and Myers went down within about 15 seconds of each other. Uh, which is not ideal when uh, the defense is sort of as thin as it is for the Canucks. But uh, let's take it back to Thursday. That feels very weird that the we only have three games to talk about, but it was Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Very weird schedule this week. Um, it is weird. So the Canucks go into Ottawa to start this road trip, a game that the Canucks should win yep. generally, right, uh, against the Sens uh, and they were not beating the PDO allegations in this game uh, <laughs> against the Ottawa Senators because uh, everyone's saying they're going to regress, they're going to regress, they're going to regress. And then what do the Canucks do? They go out, they score five goals on 16 <laughs> shots. Um, and it all starts with that Besser goal early where Besser gets the pass across from PDG, fires into the glove of Forsberg, but the glove was in the net. Uh, and it looked like it, like right yeah. off the bat as we you were thought, watching. You thought it was in? What, right when yeah. Happened? Me too. Me too. Well, because his glove kind of got caught in the post when he was pulling it back out. Like there was a bit of a hitch there. And I was like, that didn't look right. Uh, and then, yeah, upon review, a quick review. And it's one of those ones where it's like, okay, you can't technically see the puck. Are they going to be like, oh, it's not conclusive. It's like his entire gloves in the net. Um, but they, they seem to have used the common sense on that one um, yeah. for Bester's 11th of the year. I love what you call it, the PDO allegations. I know we're going to get into it. It's just so funny how no one even cared about this stat. Well, at least Canucks fans, because we were too busy looking at us at the bottom of the standings. And now that we have so many good things to talk about, so many players up for early award nominations, and now people around the league, uh, along with giving the Canucks to do, are complaining that it's not going to last. You know what? I don't care. I don't care. Like, we're going to regress. Everyone regresses. It depends. All that matters is how much you regress. So, yes, let's enjoy it. And I enjoyed that Brock Besser early goal, even though – it was on the far side of the camera, so or far side of the rink. So I don't, I can't remember if Besser reacted like he scored or if he just turned around and kept skating the other way. I don't know. I think he just kept playing. <laughs> I, I, I think he genuinely just kept playing. Uh, yeah. It was good that they, they went back and looked at it uh, at least, um, because I think the Sens came back. I think the Canucks had like two or three shots after that, so they had sixteen shots. I think they actually had like 
18, <laughs> but obviously those other ones don't count. Um, so that makes it one, nothing. Uh, they get that, that review to happen. And then a few yep. minutes later, um, we have a Mikheyev goal, uh, that this was just all for check. Uh, and that's one thing that I think the Canucks excelled at in this game and the Montreal game, not so much the Toronto game. Um, it was just the forward pressure that they were putting on and, especially from a guy like Andre Kuzmenko, who we haven't really seen that from, right? We haven't seen aggressive forecheck to cause turnovers really from him. He's more of a, you know, cerebral player that gets in the right spot and scores. Uh, but he goes in, he he makes that play to cause the turnover. Patterson makes the pass to Mikheyev, who does that little star step and, and slides it through uh, to make it 2 nothing. Yeah, it was great, great pressure, Mikheyev. Uh, sorry, Kuzmenko turning it over on Stutzla. And I, I know we're going to talk about this probably because – it's funny how Mikheyev is the one, he's kind of the stall, the straw that's steering that line's drink. He's been the most consistent, especially as, you know, as PD battling something, Kuzmenko quietly putting up points, but Mikheyev is the one scoring, and uh, yeah, it was great. It's uh, He looks like he's almost fully recovered, if not fully recovered from his knee injury, thank goodness. It's, all, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's been impressive. He's got nine points in 11 games. He's Six of those are goals, right? I mean, he's on, he's on like a 50-goal pace right now uh, for Mikheyev, which again... Is that going to continue? Probably not. I mean, his shooting percentage historically has been in like the 10 to 14 range. He's at 21% right now. It's not going to last. But um, while it is, I mean, yeah, pile up some points. Um, and it's good for him. And it's good for the team. He's doing well. Yep. Love it. Love it. Love it. So early, three minutes in, we're up to nothing. And honestly, I thought I thought we we're going to walk all over this this team. Parker, I, I, th- yeah. I didn't think it was going to be like 60 to nothing, but I thought it was going to be, it looked pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, they were putting pucks in. And, and then if you remember, that was their second shot of the game that actually counted, that Mikheyev yep. goal. And then they had one more shot in the first period, and it was a Mikheyev breakaway. So they had three shots in the entire first period, which isn't great. <laughs> you know, I, I would go and venture to say that that's not ideal. Um, they had the extra night of rest coming in, and Otto was on the second night of a back-to-back. Like, they, they should have come out and walked all over this team. Uh, and they really didn't, but yeah, they are yeah. the luckiest team of all time. Um, <laughs> so it was fine. So Batherson scores uh, near the end of the first period, which which took the window of their sales a little bit. That Ian Cole turnover, yep. um, which was unfortunate. Um, second period, Zub scores. Yeah, uh, was just a was just a shot from the point. It was from the point. Yeah, got through and then it hit Pedersen, popped over. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Pedersen's Smith looking at back to the bench. He's looking at it. It's basically like trying to summon some evil spirit out of it. It was pretty funny, actually. Like talking, he should have just broken it. That's what I would do. Like that, the stick does that too. It's like you're getting them for free. Just break it over your leg. Grab a new one. That one's done. It's cursed. Um, <laughs> but it's tied, and it's tied, and and Ottawa's playing is the better team at that point, right? The shots are yeah. well in their favor. They've got like eight to ten more shots than the Canucks do at that point. Um, and then they've pulled this one back to even, but that PDG line oh, yeah. goes to work. Um, and it's really just a, a zone entry, um, like a, a standard zone entry. It's a two on two, uh, and JT Miller with probably the best shot we've ever seen him take, uh, just an absolute snipe bar down, uh, perfect goal with two minutes to go in the, uh, the second period. The Canucks get out of it with a lead. Yeah, that's, uh, and that was the one where a uh, few DG Seppi did that he uh, gained the zone, did that really nice pass to Miller, and then just kind of subtly, not so subtly, lifted up the defenseman's stick, right? Yeah. Like, kind of got in his way. Yeah. It was good. Good. And Miller, Miller, man, he's got such a wicked shot. He's, uh, yeah. It, both his snapshot and his wrist shot. Uh, not afraid to shoot. And I, I know Heronic hasn't scored yet, he, but he keeps getting assists, but Heronic's shot's massive. He just doesn't score. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That And the thing about Miller is that adds so much danger to that power play, right? Yeah. Like yeah. having Pedersen on the one side who can rip it, but JT Miller, like on the left wing, just top of the face off circle, take two steps in and just take a wrister. And I think he scored that way in the Toronto game. Mm. Um, it's just so dangerous and they have so many weapons, uh, especially in yep. the power play. Yep. So good. Back to normal. Uh, nice late goal. And we're up three, two going into the third. Yeah. Up three, two going into the third. And then uh, again, you have an Andre Kuzmenko play that starts the next goal off for the Canucks. Kuzmenko causes a turnover at the line. Pedersen carries it in. It's a three on two sort of, and then Pedersen just stops and lets everybody get back into the zone and sort of set up. And then he just throws it at the net, not at the net. I should say he throws it probably 12 feet wide of the net by the time it gets to the goal line. And Mikheyev 
throws the foot out and catches the skate uh, and deflects that in to make it 5-2. Yeah, I'd like to know where that puck was going. Well, I, I, I kind of know. So, Petey Parker, you play hockey more than me. He did that on purpose and knew McKay would do Or do you think he just he didn't even know McKay was going to be that deft with this skate? I th- Here's the thing. I think Petey was hoping for a deflection. Yeah. And it's like, ah, if it misses, it probably comes around to our D-man on the other side. Um, <laughs> Mikheyev is probably like, wow, this thing is going wide. I got to stick my leg out to try to knock it down. And hopefully we can jam home a rebound. No, neither of them were trying that, right? No, they're not thinking, oh, I'm going to bank this off of my winger. Who's going to stick his foot way out and it's going to go in. That's not the plan, right? The plan is to create something out of that. Um, yeah. but you know, when you're lucky, you're lucky, right? When, the, when yeah. things are going your way, things will keep going your way. Yeah. Uh, and this, this game was sort of the epitome of that. Yes, I agree. I agree. Then, oh yeah, then the Pedersen, the last goal, that was the one, the two seconds in the power play, right? Two second power play. <laughs> That's amazing. And this one, this one was pretty gross because that is 95. It showed on the, it showed 91 point on the broadcast, but Shorty corrected it after he said it was 95 miles an hour. How does he know? Um, you got a radar gun up there or what was he doing? I don't know. Mate. I don't I don't know how that works, yeah, but he said it was 95. Either okay. way, it's a face-off back to Hughes, one-timer. Pedersen standing still one-timer from the point. Whether it's 92 or 95 miles an hour, that is a lot of velocity. You think of the hardest shot competition, right? They're yep. skating into that puck, and you'd see him hit 100 sometimes, right? <sighs> to be standing still and just to whip it at 95 is absurd. Um, so yeah. that just put the game away. It was a great shot. Um, and it was yeah. sort of a classic Pedersen slap shot. Then Parker, I see something like that, and then that. Of course, this happened before we knew what would happen in the Toronto and Montreal games. You see, there's no way there's anything wrong with him. The, the, the way the way he wound up and and stepped into that, or as you said, didn't even have to step into it from a stationary position. But there, I don't know. Maybe does that mean his 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 upper body is fine, but his legs are bad? I don't know. But you know what I mean. Like that, you see that. You say, man, there, there's nothing wrong with this guy. And then he kind of tails off a little bit in the other two games. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a three-point night, right? I mean, there's not much to complain about there. Um, yeah, but yeah yes. uh, it was the other two games where he looked a little bit off. Yeah, um, well, that's for true. sure. Hey, before we get to our uh, the next two games, just want to highlight a couple. Uh, thank you, Lucas, for the $5 donation right at the start of the show, actually. Two out of three wins on the road out east. Not bad. Bring Bo and the Islanders. That's correct. We're going to get through the next two games. But thank you, Lucas, for your support, as always. And Spartan, you've been very generous as well. Shorty knew about the goal before Besser did. Yes, Shorty's got a quick, uh, apparently he can he can uh, read off um, goal, you know, uh, goal speeds as well. But yes, thank you, Spartan, and thank you, Lucas, for your donations. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, two nights later, Saturday yep. night in Toronto, uh, Toronto on the second night of a back to back. And this one's basically the exact opposite of the game before <laughs> Canucks out shoot the Leafs by a factor <laughs> of one and a half to one. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> the Leafs score five. Um, this one was, this one was a frustrating game, um, to watch. They, 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 Felt a little bit slow, even though, again, everything on the stat sheet, you're like, oh, they went two for six on the power play. Power play one was atrocious in this game. Um, yes. Like a 33% power play in a game where the, the power play looked that bad uh, is impressive. Uh, we get a JT Miller goal off the top uh, on the power play. That's that downhill. And the thing is, you're like, oh, they, you know, power play one scored. Yeah. They, they, f- it was right after they finally got set up, right? <laughs> like a minute into the power play, JT Miller scores that downhill goal yeah. uh, to make it one nothing, and and things are feeling pretty good because the Canucks have all the pressure. Um, they're up one nothing, uh, and and we're expecting things to be fun. But uh, Nyes then ties it. Uh, this was just sloppy. This this Toronto goal. This is the one where everyone yeah. is just sort of in front, right? The puck gets played in front. Uh, it, it goes behind DeSmith and then the guy tries to bank. I think Bertuzzi tries to bank it off of DeSmith's back or Demko's back, I should say. Yeah, that's uh, right. And then, and then he like jams in with the backhand, but then Ian Cole makes an amazing skate save, but then no one's there to back it up. So it goes in anyways. It was, it was just one of those ones where it's like, you had probably four chances to get it out and they just yeah. couldn't do it. And it's funny. I know on NHL.com, it lists uh, Matthew Nye's shot. His goal is a, a wrist shot Parker, but you think, okay, maybe he's like 15, 20 feet out and rips it past the ankle. No, this was a 
much like their second goal was a scramble, uh, a scramble goal in the crease. And um, you could tell, you could tell that Toronto was not afraid to go at Demko and, and, and go after the, the Canucks blue liners in the blue paint for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, Canucks got it back though. They got the lead back at the end of the first. Uh, and again, you'll see, Oh, it's a power play goal. Power play was doing great. No power play. One wasted a minute, did nothing. Power play two came out, finally entered the zone at 28 seconds to go on the power play. And yep. they just set up a Bavillier one timer <laughs> that was stopped. And the rebound was the f- most free rebound of all time straight yep. into the slot to Suter all by himself with a wide open net. Uh, yeah. So Pew Suter's got four goals this oh, he's year. Been great. He's been fantastic. He's been... No assists. <laughs> not <laughs> not one. He's four the opposite goals, of Hronik, basically. Yeah. 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 And he, um, you know, I, I we, we've talked about this before. When I was watching highlights when we first um, signed him, all his goals, whether they're breakaways, deflections, rebounds, or just quick snapshots, all his goals are from right in front of the net. And this one was no different. I, in fact, I have not seen a highlight where he scores from the wing or from from distance. So it's good. It's good. He's got quick hands, that means. And he's got good hand-eye coordination. And this was yet another... You're right. This was the probably the easiest of his four goals, Parker. But he's been great. He's been really, really good. Really, really good. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, shots in the first were 12-4. to four. Canucks had things going, again, except for those power plays. Uh, there's those scraps as well um, on those big hits that... Of course, Toronto after the game was like, "Oh yeah, that fired us up." And I was like, "Yeah, you took some dumb instigator penalties on clean hits." And oh, well, that's and, right. That's this game. You know, right. I'm, and all your shots went in, right? Like, yeah, your PDO yeah. was good. <laughs> let's be, let's be real. Um, but yeah, the yeah the <laughs> second period was again pretty even, but Nylander scores um, about five minutes in, and this is another just disaster of a play in front. Oh. where Nylander takes it around Demko, slides into the crease, and Tyler Myers diving back to make a goal line save, slides the puck or slides into the net with the puck, um, which is sad. So, so when you see something like, like that, Parker, do you actually say, uh, okay, that's fine. I don't, that's, that's just happens because uh, Myers is doing his best. He's trying his best to get in there. Good for him. Or, or was your first reaction, oh, of course it's Myers. Like, I, I know that sounds kind of harsh, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, looking at the replay, he gets pushed into the net. Okay. Right. Like, right. he does. Um, I Because my initial thought is, well, he shouldn't be sliding directly at the net. He should be sliding at the post, right? Yeah. To try to prevent the puck from coming through. And if it hits him, it'll deflect away. Um, looking at the replay, he definitely gets a shove from, <laughs> uh, I think, Bertuzzi. Um, pushes him right into the net. And into the puck so that's you know unfortunate uh <laughs> yeah we're not but, we're not blaming him is what you're saying no i don't think so i mean stay on your feet a little stronger maybe <laughs> uh and then they score again with about five minutes left in the second period this is just a three on two far side shot Man, just a yep. wrist shot that gets through uh noah gregor you'll notice you have noah gregor scoring against the canucks and then the in the third period you'll have david camp scoring against the canucks my note for this game because i was taking notes i wanted to do a video but my power was still out um, oh shoot from the, from the storm the night before i was just watching on my phone uh, i was like maybe the power comes back and i can do a video it did not until one in the morning uh but, oh, <laughs> but my note that. was my big note was failure to clear the net yeah you allowed their fourth line to absolutely dominate yeah. that game their or the um, uh, Toronto's fourth line, every time they were on the ice, was I think they they were they out, I think they outcoursed the Canucks like eight to one that fourth line um, wow. as a ratio. Like they were dominant when they were on the ice, um, which you just can't allow to happen. Yeah, um, especially especially when you shut down Matthews zero points, Marner zero points, Tavares yeah. and Nylander only one point. So you're thinking, well, you held the big four to only two points combined. Pretty sure that you should be able to win. Yeah, you say to the penalty box, you only had yep. they only had two power plays. Uh, yep. I mean, they scored one, I think, right after a power play ended. But yeah, like you, you played you played a pretty good hockey game, um, except for when their fourth line was on the ice. Uh, and then yeah, the Canucks just couldn't create. Um, this was a game, and my other note on this was like Pedersen was invisible in this game. Yeah. Um, I mean, you look at the stat sheet, like I hey, one assist, but a dash three, um, four shots, but he. Did not look right in this one. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. It's uh yeah. And you're you, you said it so well at the start of the show, Parker. It doesn't matter in the big picture where you get your points, they all count the same. 
but yeah, you just you just want him. You always want him to do well, and it, it's amazing the fact that he's had two off games. I know we're going to get to the Montreal one in a sec. Yet he still leads the league in scoring. That just shows how well he started. I guess it's pretty, pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah. The thing is, like, again, we mentioned that game where he didn't look at. Hey, he still got a point. Like he's. I don't know how he just constantly puts up points, uh, except for uh, yesterday's game, which is. Uh, I mean, any other thoughts on the Leafs game? It was just a frustrating one to me. Like yeah. just watching it, it just it was just an annoying hockey game to watch. Yep, annoying is a good way of putting it. And then, um, yeah, I can't remember the oh the Robertson one. That was the goal where where I remember Hughes had an easy uh, opportunity to was it the Robertson or Camp? One of them he could have cleared it, and then and then yeah, he put it right into the other guy's skates. Yeah, and then was it, it Domi that just then, didn't make the strong play? Yeah, yeah. He put Domi it into Domi's off. skates, yep. I think, gotcha. and then and I think Domi held off, off both Ronick and Miller or Hiromik and yeah. someone. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't the best. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Frustrating. Too, and then and then yeah. yeah, Toronto basically just iced it with that long shot from Gregor that Camp tipped in. Um, that Demko just needs to be on his post, and he wasn't. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you think it's an off game for Demko, or just off game for the whole team? The whole t- it didn't feel right, right? It's not you were not. Yeah, it. everything just felt a little off. I mean, again, they played okay except for when the fourth line was on the ice and they allowed them to to generate too much. And it felt yeah. like a lot of stuff was from the outside on the Canucks uh perspective. Um and yeah, Demco I mean we're so used to him just winning games. Yeah. On his own. Uh yeah. didn't do that in this one. So how'd you watch this game then if your power was out? Just on the phone. Oh, of course, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. You could have recorded a um Video on your phone. I'm just bugging you. <laughs> I didn't want to. Not after that. I was frustrated. I'm like, and I'm gonna have to like figure out a, a setup and everything. It's yeah, too oh, much work. double Not whammy. Double whammy. No. But at least they got to get back to it right away the next day. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's one of those things where on one hand you're like, oh man, like they don't even have time to like recoup after this. But also you're playing Montreal on a back to back, a team that you should beat. Yep. Um, very good opportunity to just throw that last one out the door, right? Don't even think about it. It <laughs> happened. It's gone. Um, and they went out and, and they just, they played a good game against yeah. Montreal. Uh, they, they just went out there. They played their game. Um, they shut down the top guys on the Montreal side. I mean, you look at Monaghan was a minus three. Gallagher was a minus three. Suzuki was a oh. minus four. Um, the, the Canucks took it to these guys. Um, but let's look at the, so the first goal, I, I guess, the the first period, not, there's no goals. Um, Tanner Pearson had the shot that hit the post that the horn guy thought went in. Um, <laughs> that was a fun moment. Um, the can, this was super scrambly this first period. If you remember that, mm-hmm. right? It was very mm-hmm. like everything. Everyone was sort of like both of these teams looked like they were on the second nights of back to backs. Like yeah. every, a puck would go into the corner, everyone would sort of look at it. And then go like there yeah. was just there was a there was a half a step uh, on everybody, um, and honestly in the first period there was one line that did anything, and that was the just Giuseppe Miller Besser line was the only yeah. good line in the first period. Great point, and um, I do watch all your videos, so I do know that you made the point of saying that the Canucks we were like a half second behind, realizing that the puck was in the corner. I love the other thing you said too, and I picked up on this is they gave up three. They weren't like outright two on ones from center, but they were kind of half two on ones where a guy would pinch right at the, at the blue line. Yeah. And then it would be a, like a, enough where it is a two on one, but not the most dangerous ever. And I think uh, Montreal fan on one and they missed it out on that, but yeah, yeah. It, it could have been a lot worse for sure because of how scrambly it was. Yeah, absolutely. Um, second period though, Canucks who have been again, their first four games of the season when they were two mm-hmm. and two, they were really bad in the second period. And then since then, other than the Toronto game, they've been unreal in second periods. Um, so they just go out and they just score three. <laughs> I mean, you have <laughs> that Garland goal where it's just like a regular zone entry. Uh, great play from Hughes sort of allows it sort of to be a, sort of two on one all on the one side of the ice. And then Garland just guns it to the net uh, and Miller slides it to him and, and Garland gets a stick on it. Um mm-hmm. Connor Garland, by the way, what a night he had last what a night. Beast. Oh. He was he was unbelievable last night yeah like yeah. as as advertised uh what we expected <laughs> to see from him um the second goal was a mckay no yeah no stick for the goalie yeah the goal so this one was weird because alan didn't have a stick and and his own you, his you own player did it to him it was so weird i don't remember that how'd that yeah. happen 
uh, Gooley was skating through the crease and there wasn't even a shot or anything. And Alan just was just down. His hands. It just not, and it, it gets behind the net. You know how it gets caught up. In, and then we saw it ended up on the other side behind his left shoulder. <laughs> it's so weird. Right. Yeah. Um, this one, yeah, it's just like a regular zone entry. Uh, and the Canucks did a good job of not letting the puck get past center here. Yeah. Like Montreal got out of the zone, but the you're, you're right. The stick is behind Allen to the left. Like he'd have to leave his net to go get it. He didn't have time. So the Canucks get the quick entry back in. Uh, Petey set a really nice pick here on the blue line. Uh, yeah. And then Mikheyev just comes in and you'd expect him to shoot blocker, right? Goalie doesn't have a stick. Shoot low, yep. shoot blocker, right? Yep. Uh, but instead he shoots glove, which worked. <laughs> Um, and even if you look at it, like Alan's cheating glove side a little bit, like he's way out. Uh, it's like, it's not the right place to shoot, but he just, yeah. he just straight up beats him. So Parker, I think you have, I've never played goal on ice or roller hockey or anything just, just in the street. Obviously I, I, I can imagine if you don't have a stick, you're, you don't feel completely balanced. You're worried about the five hole. Yeah, exactly. What you said you think the blocker would be the harder one because you got nothing in that hand. At least you, the other hand, you have your glove. But uh, I presume that Jake, uh, like any goaltender, would just feel a little bit off, right? You just feel unsettled a little bit. Yeah, I I've, I played goalie in, yeah. uh, in, in like H3 uh, when I was like six uh, for one game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I allowed five goals and we tied. <laughs> <That's> um, bad. <laughs> so I'll take it. Uh, I think the other goalie was also a kid who never played goal. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, that was sort of my assumption, right? Like the go- a goalie so used to... You know, having the stick in that blocker hand that yes. you got to think like, yeah, you're just a little off balance, right? You're not, your, your weight is not as dispersed as you're used to it being. Um, so maybe Mikheyev was, was like in his head and thinking, like, yeah, you think I'm going to go blocker <laughs> side, but I'm actually going to go glove. I, I might be overthinking it, but he may have just saw an opening and just let it go. Um, yeah. it was a good shot yeah. though. Um, yeah. Six goal of the year. Make oh, two nothing. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Great point about the little subtle PD pick. And Kuzmenko, mm-hmm. yeah, making sure the puck didn't get past center is really good. Really, really good. Yeah, and then you have uh, the third goal of the period, and this was the Garland special, right? Oh. He just gets an assist on it. You know, you look at the scores, you're like, yeah, he might have done something. He goes in, he takes the puck, essentially, or he doesn't take it into the zone, but he takes it, he gets a shot off that I think hits the post, or no, uh, Allen gets a piece of it mm-hmm. with the glove. The yeah. rebound comes around, Heronic cycles it down low, two halves down below the net, Garland goes in, just sort of forces his body through between the boards and the Habs players and just emerges with the puck, comes out, throws a backhand on net, and then the rebound comes out into the slot. He's the first on that too, goes on one knee to take the shot, and then Joshua you know, sort of bangs home the rebound uh, to make it 3-0. This was a fantastic play. And we always joke around about, maybe it's not that nice, but it's true that... <laughs> Connor Garland, he looks busy. He he works hard, but he looks busy, but it's so ineffective. But this was like his entire first four. Remember, he scored the very first goal of the season for the Canucks on that, that tip in from PD, and then hasn't scored since until this game. It's almost like he saved up his energy for the previous 14 games and on that one shift. It was it was quite remarkable. Like he was unstoppable at, at five foot, whatever he is. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> he was very good uh in this one. Um, and so we need to see. Yep. It, it's, it's it's you know we absolutely needed the, a game like this um from Connor Garland mm-hmm. so three nothing going into the third uh, I mean the games you know they they shouldn't lose this right they've got a good goalie yeah. in net um you know they're playing pretty well they let the Habs get one back on the power play uh, this five mm-hmm. on three because um Juleson got the penalty what was Juleson's penalty for it, his was a high stick Right. And he didn't yeah. like it because he sort of ran the stick like one hand up the other guy's stick and it <laughs> caught the face, which it's a high stick. You can't do that. Um, but luckily for the Canucks, that power play goal comes right as the one penalty expires. So it actually, you know, that takes them off the power play. You have this great shot of Tyler Myers just sprinting back into the zone as the puck goes into the net mm-hmm. um, at, to, to do nothing. Uh, but <laughs> luckily for the Canucks, that power play was over and they're just back to even strength. Um, and they could, uh, they could bounce back. Yeah. It's funny uh, that Matheson, um, that's the same Matheson that played for the Panthers that not wrestled mm-hmm. PD to the ground in this. Yeah. He's a remarkable and, human being. 
I think was the quote. <laughs> I, I remember that. That's the same Matheson that in that crazy 7-6 win Vancouver or Montreal that PD stripped the puck from uh, in that overtime. I right. remember last season. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I know on the on the um, broadcast, they were talking about how good of a skater Matheson is. And I never really noticed that, but I guess he's a decent player, I guess. He's like, turned into an entirely different player in Montreal. Yeah, that's weird. Like his 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 career high in points because he played with the Penguins for two years after the Panthers. Yeah, he yeah. Thirty one points, and then last year he had thirty four points in forty eight games. Wow! Like he he was on like a fifty five point pace last year. Yeah. Because um, well, his ice time went way up too. It shot from like eighteen minutes to twenty five. Um, smokes because he's you know he's a he's a top pairing guy for them now. And yeah, he's got twelve yeah. points already this year. I mean, he's a minus nine already this year. <laughs> That's yeah, a bit yeah. tough, but yeah, he's uh, he's putting up points. Yeah. So then you think, okay, three one games in the bag, and you wouldn't expect three goals scored in the final ninety seconds. <laughs> no, uh, this is one of those things that um, <laughs> you ever play the NH. You probably haven't played the NHL video games a ton, but no, when no, you're I trying to get points for guys, and yeah. so you score on the empty net. And then you're up by three and then you're like, ah, there's still time left. So you let the other team score. So that way they pull their goalie again. So you can get more points for your guys. Um, <laughs> that's sort of what the Canucks did here, right? They, they have the nice little breakout, Besser scores from center. Uh, yeah. And then Jack I scores um, just a, an ugly one, <laughs> just sort of skating in to the top of the faceoff circle and just beats to Smith, which sucks for his stats. Um, Cause he was on pace for yeah 30, uh, 30 of 31 that's, it would have been true. uh which would have been fantastic um but that one goes through yep. and then uh the Canucks do a nice little nice little selfless passing play I mean I don't think Besser could have taken it himself because he was getting some pressure but a little yeah. pass to Miller a little pass to PDG uh and he uh he makes a 5-2 the empty net. that Miller yeah you're right Besser would have been tough but he could have easily got greedy and tried to score from the boards Miller could easily scored from where he was, but yeah, it was really nice. I, I think they they both realized that they're going to get their lion's share of the goals on that on that line. So it was nice. It was great to reward PDG. I think it was, it was awesome. Quite frankly, mm -hmm. yeah, it was good. Yeah. So I mean, all in all, I mean, pretty good road trip. You have mm -hmm. two wins for Casey to Smith. I think he's what four zero and one now. Yeah. In his that sounds right. Is that five five starts for him? Yeah. Five um, starts. That's not too bad. Nine twenty two save percentage uh, on his part. 9.33 in the first game, 9.38 in the second. And it could have been, you know, it could have been like a 9, 9.60 something if he didn't let that last one in. Um, yeah. But great from DeSmith. Uh, yeah, you'll notice Patterson off the score sheet in that 5-2 game yesterday uh, with the likes of Bluger, Suter, Lafferty, and Beauvillier among the forwards. Um, not the company you necessarily want to be a part of um, mm -hmm. if you're Patterson, but 80% uh, in the faceoff circle is good. Yeah, I guess yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good stat. But um, okay, yeah, we want to talk about it now because we just wrapped up. Do you do you think so? Well, there's got to be because Rick Talkett, did you catch that in one of the in one of the pregame like scrums that Talkett did? He, I can't remember the exact terminology, Parker, but he basically said that PD's dealing with something, and it. it yeah, I was really surprised that Talkett actually said it in the yeah in the thing. Yeah, I, I and it's, it's it. not surprising. Uh, right. I, I I did miss that, but it, it isn't surprising. Like he, yeah, he just does. He hasn't had that flash that he normally does, um, especially the last maybe week or week and a half. Um, again, he's still producing for the most part. You know, he leads the league in points. Uh, you can't really complain. But yeah, yeah he's. I, it's sort of at that point where I'm I'm a little nervous. It's like, okay, if it's not healing or whatever it is, if it's something that he thinks he can play through and it'll get better, it's fine. But like, at what point do you say, hey, maybe we got to sit him for a couple of games if it's going to get him to 100%? Yep. And you'd be fine. Yeah, I heard that on another show, too. You'd be fine with that if we sat him, sat him for a couple of games just to make sure? Yeah. I mean, look, the, the Canucks have, have given themselves a buffer. There's going mm -hmm. to be injuries for every team throughout the season. Um, you've got some game. You know, you've got the Islanders, the Flames, the Kraken, and the Sharks this week, right? Like, those are some those are some winnable games, even if you don't have Elias Patterson. Uh, and again, I'm not saying you should just sit him just for the, you know, to sit him. But um, if it's if it's going to, you know, Patterson at 100% for the whole season is more useful than Patterson at 80% for the whole season. Yep. That's true. Then you wouldn't have to send Jack Sneaker to the minor. No, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> like that to do with it. So is it still the Myers slap shot that went off of PD's like ankle in the fifth know. game? It uh, might be, yeah. right? I mean, mm-hmm. that's that seems to be like the thing that happened uh, that we've seen at least, right? Um, but I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. Maybe, uh, uh, yeah, it's one of those uh, gaps that we talk about, the, the two two days between games because uh, Monday, Tuesday. So they didn't even practice today. They were traveling probably and then uh, back on the ice tomorrow. So it'll be interesting to see, of course, and I, will, I know we'll get into this with Carson Susie if he's on the ice. Interesting to see if they call someone up because he's not on the ice. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, I guess, a good place to go next, that Susie injury. Because uh, this was, yeah, Tyler Myers got taken down and he looked hurt and oh. then Susie got the puck to the leg <laughs> um, which isn't good now usually you see pucks to the leg and you're thinking okay that's a stinger right it's usually yeah. not damage um, you know they hurt but they're usually you know skin deep yeah. um, this doesn't seem to be the case because they had to wave Studnika uh, in theory to call up another defenseman which I think means that they won't be putting Susie on LTI which is good Right, uh, right. So it's it's just a temporary thing, but yeah, it's uh, not ideal to not have Susie in the lineup because he's he's been pretty good. Like <laughs> he's been very low event, uh, in my opinion. Uh, he really hasn't been offensive on the ice. Um, right. So actually, that's a really good point about the way they're gonna uh, they're gonna handle the roster because when Bluger came back, Hoglander sat, but Stanika was already an extra. Correct. Yeah. Right. So yeah, last yeah. night, the extras were Stadnika, um, Hoglander, and Friedman. So the, you, there's your three extras. You, yeah, so you're right. You send out Stadnika so you can bring up either uh, Wolanin or Hirose, my, is my guess. Yeah, that's yeah. really the only option, I think. Yeah. Um, Who do you want? I know you like Wolanin. Yeah, I don't know how yeah. either of them have been doing um, in Abbey. I, I, went, yeah. I went to one game last week there. Um, well, you did. And yeah last friday I was it good say. yeah it was fine uh they lost I think it was like five two uh, but it was a fun <laughs> time um like hirose looked pretty good well Anna didn't really stand out um mm. it was, yeah the, i think their top pairing in abbey right now is hirose mcward at least that was oh. the starting pairing uh that night so oh well so uh, i just pulled it up well Anna does have 14 and 13 not, not that it's about points but he has two goals uh 12 assists so he has 14 and 13 and Hirose is yeah and i'm wondering little, little. if talk it's thinking you know when he's thinking about who to call up yeah um although yeah well Landon wouldn't have to clear waivers again yet would he or are we I don't, I don't it's been 30 that. days now right it has been clear if, going back down if that's the rule yeah it's, it's been more than 30 but he days. probably yep. would clear i would think i'd hope so no one took him the no, first uh, time yeah um so that's maybe one thing to keep in mind but also you're thinking if you're talking like you know, you probably want the vet, right? You probably want the guy. If, if you're getting a guy to come in for two games, you probably want the guy who's played more, right? Who's, How who's, does Hirose have no points in 11 games in Abbotsford? That's very bizarre. That's, that's... not ideal. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say probably, probably going to be Will Andon then. Yeah. That would be yeah. my bet. Okay, I'm with you. Um, but yeah, you. so hopefully we see we see someone come up and hopefully they do well and hopefully Susie comes back soon because uh, he's been he's been quite good. Yeah, yeah, he has been he has been good. I think he's been better than Cole. I, you'd pro- I don't. I think so too. Mouth. Yeah, yeah, but then it just shows as much as the defense has improved Parker since last season. As soon as you take out Susie, who's technically a top four guy, right? He was playing with Myers. It looks a lot weaker because now you're Hughes Heronic, which are still amazing. And you have Cole, who's just been okay. Myers, who's been okay. And then Friedman and Juleson, who are fighting each other against the lineup. And now you're going to have Hirose or or Wolan. And it, it, it falls off a little bit pretty quick. Especially when, yeah, all you need to know is Mark Friedman was our number six for, for the last 10 games. And a good number six. Yep, he's been good. <laughs> I've, I've liked Friedman. Uh, yeah. Myers has been a lot better lately. Yeah. Um, simplifying his game and playing less ice time has been a big difference. Like you've actually seen him like go on some rushes that have looked pretty good, but he always gets back uh, except for when he's sliding the puck into his own net. Uh, He's been very, very good um, defensively uh, in my opinion. So Mm -hmm. I, uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I hope we continue to see that, uh, that from him. 
So I heard on a couple, I think it's the Carison Price or someone. Do you think the reason why, uh, why, why do you think Juleson played ahead of Friedman last night just for a change? Yeah. Maybe just coming off the loss and the yeah. extra night of rest. Maybe. Um, I hope that was it. Um, I, I haven't really liked Juleson much this year. Um, I, I just don't think he's he's played very well, um, and I think there's a, a good reason he wasn't in the lineup um, in place of Mark Friedman for yeah. most of these games. So yeah. I'm hoping it wasn't like an injury thing, and it was just a hey, we just need we just need a you know a fresh body, and you know we lost. Let's let's change it up a little bit. Yep, and for, yeah, that's true. That's that's fair. That's fair. And you have Jules sitting all the way. Maybe he's been working his butt off in practice, and maybe um, they knew they're kind of going to win anyway, so they, they weren't you know counting on Susie getting hurt. So. Yeah, maybe a good place to put uh, Juleson in for a game. Okay, okay, not the end of the world. You you you've talked me off the ledge. I'm I'm okay now. I'm okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm looking. Um, yeah, so Hirose McWard and Johansson are waiver exempt. Um, okay, and that is that is it. That's it. Uh, you could also pull up Matt Irwin. Possibility. That's right. <laughs> we have that guy. Uh, yeah, that's sort of that's that's sort of what I thought he was brought in for, right? Well, he was going to be like, "Hey, he's going to be a number seven, and then turns out that we had other guys who could do that job uh, seemingly better. I totally forgot about Irwin. Yeah, and he played that's, more than half a, the season last year in Washington, correct? Did he play correct. 50 games? Yeah, I think he played. Yeah. He played. Uh, what was At it? Least he played six, 61 games last year. Wow. Um, for the caps. Uh, he's got two points in nine games. He's a plus six or no, that's, yep. a, that's Pims. He's a, he's a plus three in Abby. Okay. Okay. So a couple All of right. options. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, you got me thinking now that you talk about the veteran thing and the fact that again, it's not based on just points alone, but I don't know enough about Abbotsford right now. Maybe Hirose hasn't been playing as well. Maybe yeah. Irwin's even a, a, a safer call up for talk it than, than Hirose. So maybe, maybe it is Will Lennon than Irwin than Hirose. Ah, oh, I never even thought maybe. about Irwin. Yeah. Yeah. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, he's, he was playing, I think he was playing second or third pair in Abbey, uh, that game that I went to. Um, so yeah, I think he was playing with, I think he was playing with Jet Wu. Very physical, um, physical pair. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So should we uh, talk for a few minutes about this Wednesday? <laughs> what sure. You expect? Yeah, so we have the return. Of, we have the return of heart. They're gonna. They're, it's gonna be fine. They're, no one's booing him. Like a couple of people will, but it's not gonna stand out. Like oh, I think, I think the whole Horvat thing got blown out of proportion a little bit. I think it's gonna be. You know, they'll. You know, they'll do a little video of like your former captain, whatever. People will cheer. It'll be fine. Uh, I don't think. I don't think people are gonna be booing um, Bo. And I don't think they should. Yeah. Yeah, so I got a, I got a couple of things to, to say, and I would love your reaction. And one of them, this interview that everyone is still still up in arms of. Remember, it was his first time in front of his home fans, and he's not trying to get Vancouver fans mad at him. He's right. trying to get his new fans on his side. And the question wasn't who has better fans. The question was, you're going to be playing in a playoff game in front of these fans. And that's what right. he said. Well, it's much better than Vancouver. Not the New York Islander fans are better or, or the weather's better or whatever. He was saying that the chat, the fact that he's going to now play in the playoffs, that's better. So I don't blame him at all. So I, I can't believe I'm still revisiting that, but it keeps coming up. Uh, I can't either. Is, I can't believe we're still on this. <laughs> I know. I know. That was my, so that's my other point, Parker. I got, I, I started to see that this was even before the Montreal game. So I get it after the Montreal game. Now everyone's eyes, everyone's uh, focused on the, the next game, which is, but this was before the Montreal game and people were talking about Horvat. Oh, I think you got to cheer him. No, you must boo him. No, you've got to cheer him. No, you got to boo him. Everyone, you do whatever you want. You pay, you don't pay. You watch at the arena, you watch at home. You do whatever you want. I, I'm not going to tell, we have no right to tell anyone what to do. Um, just like that. And that was my point. I, I just kind of did this tweet mm -hmm. we're saying. And then I was obviously I know what connects Twitter is like. So then I had a couple people sarcastically saying, Oh, are you new here? Or <laughs> kind of thing. And I said, that's a, that's a really good point. I, I can't tell anyone what to do, but I think you and I are in the same place. We recognize that. Yeah. Maybe he wasn't the best player ever. Maybe he didn't stand up for guys as much as we wanted to, but I don't know what you want, but he was solid for eight years. He was the captain. He, he took us through some of the darkest times, uh, social justice issues, COVID bubble, 
Um, and, and, and he really played well the last two seasons and he was very durable. So for all those reasons, I, and, and community, yeah, I, I do like yeah. him. And, and, and if I was there, I'm not going to be there, but I, I'd cheer him. I'd cheer him. Yeah. That's series against the blues alone. Like that's, yeah. that means more than him saying, you know, I'll tell you that for free. Like let's <laughs> it's, you know, that was big for us, you know, getting us through yeah. that series, getting us to the second round. Um, you know, he had yeah. a, he had a really big part in that. So yeah, I think it's yeah. a little, a little silly to, uh, I don't, I know some um, people are saying, uh, so it's funny. You know how they do the TV timeout? Uh, they the, usually do the tribute video, Parker, on the first TV timeout, which is, you know, six minutes after the first whistle, six minutes in. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say, as long as it's yeah. not a, a penalty, uh, I mean, a, a goal or an icing. So he'll touch the puck a few times before that, obviously. So, uh, you know, there, there's a school of thought, cheer him for the video tribute, but then after that, boo him when he touches the puck. Oh, yeah, that's fine. But he's going to touch the puck a few times before that video tribute. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be interesting. I I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah. Because now, because because during the video tribute, you are tributing his time on your team, right? But after that, when he has the puck on the other team, he's he's your enemy now, right? Yep. And I and yep. I totally appreciate. I I think that would be a good a good balance if you're on the whichever side you're on. Yes, 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 yes. No, it should be should be a good night in the arena. I think it's not so good though. They're not so good. I was looking at their stats today. They're not. No, great. they lost to the Oilers tonight. Um, yeah. Uh, which sucks for us. Um, yeah. yeah, they're they're near the bottom of the metro. They're five, six, and three. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've lost five straight. Wow, they've lost five straight. Horvat's got I think eleven points. Like he's he's doing okay, but yeah, the team yeah. is uh, the team is is floundering uh, a good bit. I mean, they're not really out of it. I mean, they're two points out of a playoff spot. Yeah, <laughs> like they're yeah. the yeah. the East is a little messy right now. I mean, maybe they're three right. points out of a playoff spot, but. Um, yeah, the East is messy. The Metro is messy. Uh, a team that's or a division that's been so good um, recently. Um, yeah, they're gonna want this one, uh, especially coming off mm-hmm. you know letting letting the Oilers sort of get back into things uh, today. The, it's one the Canucks should win. You're at yeah. home. There's gonna be some buzz in the building. Uh, you got it. There. You got two days of rest coming in. Um, there's no reason that they shouldn't be the favorites in this one. I just realized we have four games to preview. There's four this week. Um, so yeah, we got so we'll spend one or two minutes on each. Okay, uh, so we'll we'll do our prediction, our across the board prediction at the end. So the next night, it's weird. The the four games we're going to preview, three of them are home ones, except they do that quick jaunt to Calgary for the next night. Yeah, quick turnaround too, because there's the hour of time change. So it's uh, right. They'll probably fly there right after the island or the yeah, the Isles game, I yeah. imagine. Um, mm-hmm. So it'll be a, a late night and. Probably a late sleep and they probably won't skate Thursday. Um, yeah. Yeah. They might yeah. do a, a quick lap, but uh, sure. yeah, that's, uh, you know, the flames have been bad too, right? They're four, eight and two. Um, they're two, they've won two of their last 10. Like they've, oh. they've been bad. Uh, it's another team that you got to take advantage when these teams are floundering, um, especially the Canucks. Yeah. Like you got to take advantage when you're hot. You got to take advantage mm-hmm. when these other teams aren't. Um, uh, so they should be pretty clear favorites. I think in both of these games. What do you think of these, all these, not even to Vancouver, but these Tanev, Zadorov rumors or whatever? What do you think about all that? Think- yeah, I think it's early. I, I know yeah. Rutherford sort of has this history of beating the trade deadline, like <laughs> not paying those trade deadline prices and getting guys a little bit early, yeah. uh, which might help with chemistry and things like that. But sure, I'm, I'm sort of the mindset right now of, I mean, could the Canucks use more defensemen? Absolutely. <laughs> um, there would have, the thing is like, what's the cost for, let's say they were going to go after a guy like Tanev, right? Yep. The cost in that is you probably have to get Bavillier involved in that deal to have the cap space to bring a Tanev in or a Zadorov in or whoever. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, but does Bavillier have positive value? I don't think so. Not right now. Right. So you're now paying extra to get them to take on the Bavillier money and you have to pay for the player. Like it's, you're, we're we're it's a little early right we're 15 <laughs> we're 15 games in the team's yeah. been better than expected analytically this team's like a 500 just over 500 hockey team let's be real right they're yep. they're playing they're sort of playing like a 95 point team and they're producing like a 130 point team which is yes. great and and what that means is the canucks are on pay or like they're projected by the athletic now to get 104 points this year Right. That's, that's just what a strong start will do. No, like even if sure they'll regress, but if they regress to be a 95 point team, the rest of the way out, they're doing just fine. Um, but do you really want to take this stretch of 
good fortune and good play to be fair. Like they look a lot better. Um, but if this team's true talent is maybe that of a 97 point team, which I think is probably about where they lie, maybe 98, maybe a hundred even yep. that they're not winning the cup this year. They might, I mean, but they're probably not, uh, you know, most right. teams don't in their first kick at the can, yep. um, once they start becoming a playoff team. So, you know, do you really want to start dipping into the rental market this early? Um, when, you know, they could just as easily have a bad stretch and, and, you know, it's, it just, I feel like you have so much time, right? Yeah. Game 40, maybe, you know, we can start thinking yeah. about this, but you know, 15 games, it's a decent sample size, but it's, it's not indicative of how the whole season's going to go. Right. Do we yeah. think, do we really think, you know, the, the ducks are going to win 50 games this year? <laughs> I don't. Right. Are the Canucks? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a little bit too early to start jumping in on that. You make such a good point uh, about, yeah, I do have confidence that Alvin and Rutherford will, will see the big picture and will not make a weird, desperate buy at the, at the deadline. Cause they think this is the year. Hopefully this is setting up the foundation for a multitude of years. Right. And mm. it's ex- exactly what you were just talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if this team, if this team is where they are now after 45 games this year, Right. If they are like a couple points behind Vegas at the 45 game mark for the top of the Pacific. Yep. Then I can get on board. Yeah. Right. That's like, all right. Hey, yeah. Maybe, maybe throw a draft pick or a prospect out and, yep. and, you know, maybe add a piece. And, and maybe at that point we're saying, hey, you know, we're not going out in the first round. Maybe we want to be a second, maybe even a third round team. If you're that high in the Pacific, then you actually have some, you know, some clout to be able to back that up. Yeah. Um, and then at that point, yeah, make a move. If you're adding, if, if, you know, then, then at that point, look, I, I don't like the, you know, get it and anything can happen sort of idea, but if you can get into the third round, anything can happen. Right? <laughs> so yeah, if you're, yeah, get in and anything can happen. If you're like a top three team in the conference, maybe a top four team. Um, but if you're the, if you're the seven or the eight seed, I mean, sure. Anything could happen, but the odds are not in your favor. Sure. Well, we'll be revisiting it as the year goes on for sure. Yeah. What a conversation for us to be having in November though. Uh, Yeah. What a, uh, what a change. (laughs) It's awesome. It's usually usually the other way around Parker. Last two seasons we've been like, how how are we out of the playoffs uh, race already? Yeah. It's like, Oh man, who's expiring at the end of this year that we can trade for something. (laughs) (laughs) And how are we going to, how are we going to talk about this for (laughs) five more months and then another off season? This is what we've been hoping for. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Absolutely. So we talked about the Calgary uh, Islanders yep. and Calgary games. Yeah. Uh, again, Canucks should be favorites in both of those. That back to back will be a bit tough, but I mean, th- with the Canucks goaltending the way it is, like I, I have no problem with, like normally back to back, like all right, you know, hopefully the backup can can pull a win in half of them. Yeah. Now with DeSmith and these back to backs, like man, I mean, it's not even a downgrade, really. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a. Oh, no. It's it's a lateral move. You have essentially a one A and one B right now. That um, you know, I'm very confident with either of them out there. Yeah. Um, then we go to Saturday night. Uh, the Canucks got the Kraken uh, at home uh, again. Just the welcome. Kraken have looked the Kraken yeah. have looked not great. Also, they're five eight and three, about exactly where we thought they'd be. Right, sort of yeah. fifth in the division. Um, now we didn't think the Ducks would be ahead of them and the Flames and always be below them. That wasn't how we envisioned it. Um, but Again, another winnable game um, yeah. that the Canucks should have. Yep. That sh- <laughs> I don't know if you're looking at the comments. We'll, we'll get to it in like two minutes. <laughs> what is going on? Why is there like a rap battle? <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you. I'll tell you two minutes when we get I have there. not been keeping up with the chat. <laughs> no, it's 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 funny. Uh, I, I promise that to you. I would never leave you hanging. It's nothing bad. And you don't have to do it because um, you still probably win. So yes, uh, they, they got to hammer Seattle. They're playing them twice in six days and uh, – that yeah, I can't wait for us to smoke them. I'm I'm actually going to that game. That's my next game I'm going to. Is this yeah, yeah, that should be yeah. yeah. Next game I'm going to is the other Kraken game. Uh, the week after that, um, yeah. But then yeah, awesome. so they they have the Saturday at seven, and then the Monday against the Sharks. Yeah. Like I mean, this is this is looking like a, a real opportunity, and and a you know, an opportunity the Canucks cannot pass up. Right? Yeah. If they go two and two this week, it is a failure. <laughs> genuinely like that's a yep. it, it just is and on the standings they'll they'd be 13 5 and 1 and we like everything's fine right yeah. there's still eight games over 500 but looking at this like 3 and 1 is the bar 
Yep. In this four game stretch. Like, eh, maybe you lose to Calgary. Maybe you lose to the Islanders. Yeah. You, you should beat the doors off the crack and the sharks. Absolutely. Yes. And the yeah. flames are down and out right now. Take advantage of it. The Islanders have lost five straight. Take advantage of it. Yeah. Um, if this team is the, you know, as good as they've looked and as good as we hope they are, these are the teams that they should go out and just take care of business against. Parker, imagine if we sweep these guys, go four and zero, and then what? We're fifteen three and one. <laughs> yeah, you're top in the league probably at that point, right? Like, yeah. I mean, they're they're only two points out of being the top of the top of the yeah. NHL right now. Yeah, um, you do that, you're definitely there. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I think that's too high of a bar to set. Um, is it possible? Sure. But they just got off a five game winning streak and then they had like a three game winning streak before that. They're going to have another five game winning streak. They're going to drop one of these, right? It's just, it just happens, right? Each of these games, like the Islanders, they probably go in as 65, 35 favorites. The flames probably closer to even with the flames being at home. That might be like a fifth. The Canucks might be road favorites, but maybe it's more like 55, 45 cracking at home. That's going to be a 70 30 sharks at home. That's going to be a 75, 25, maybe Not higher. Two. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just yeah. Kidding. I mean, we'll think that way. The, the betting markets probably won't. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, like genuinely, you know, you look at that. It's like, yeah, the Canucks will you know, law of averages. They'll drop one most likely. Sure. And over a long sample size, they might drop two on some of these occasions as well, but yeah. also they might win four on a couple of these occasions also. So, I think I think three and one is a is a great bar. If they go two one and one, I won't love it. But you know, hey, if anything above five hundred, the rest of the way the Canucks will do just fine. Yeah, and yeah, if they if they go to uh, three and one or two one and one, well, let's say three and one, and then they're now they'd be ten games over five hundred. That means they're only going to play two or three games over five hundred for the rest of the year to make the playoffs. And yeah. Yeah, that's 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 amazing. But yes, let's enjoy it. I'll, I'll join you on the three one, three and one prediction for sure, for sure. Yeah, I like that. I'd be happy awesome. with that. Me too. I won't Me like too. it the night that they lose. If they lose, I'll be mad, right. yeah. especially if it's the Flames. But I will be happy at the end of the week if they can just take to the Sharks and and the Kraken. Uh, yeah. And then yeah, you look at it. It's like yeah, they they they, they play the Avalanche. That'll be tough. But then they play the Kraken and the Sharks and the Ducks, right? Like the Canucks have a pretty easy schedule here to start this yeah. season. And yeah. the teams that they're supposed to beat, they've been beating. Yeah, skip that Flyers game at the beginning of the year, right? Yeah. That one that one was the – but like you look at the teams they've lost to because they've only lost four times this year, yeah. right? They had the, the Flyers loss. That, you know, that one was bad. But the Flyers have been okay. Yeah. Um, they lost yeah, to the but- Lightning, which the yeah. Lightning are a good team. You know, there's no real shame in that game. Yeah. And then they've lost to the Rangers and OT, yeah. but that was one of the best games they've played all year. Yeah. And the Rangers are supposed to be better than them. And they lost to the Maple Leafs, who were also yeah. supposed to be better than them coming into the year. Yeah. And Rangers they've, and Toronto are top 10 teams, and we beat Dallas, another top 10 team. We're doing, yeah. Yeah. They've, they've done, they have done things that I wouldn't expect them to do. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Three wins should, should not be out of the question this week. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. Excellent. 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 Yeah. Puts the Canucks at yeah, the athletic has the Canucks at 94% to make the playoffs, which it, we're at the point where they're, they're just good. <laughs> 104 points uh, is the projection uh, that puts them ahead of LA uh, wow. 4% chance to win the Stanley cup. That's pretty cool. Ooh, that's, that's it. like a real number. Um, <laughs> they've got them at a 24% chance to win the division. Uh, 33% oh. to be second, 26% to be third. And then everything else, it's like, the, I mean, that's not a lot of percent left to be fourth, fifth, sixth. Yes. Um, they're basically projecting. It's just going to be Vegas, Vancouver, LA. And then who knows down the rest of the way. Cause I mean, the <laughs> like making the playoffs looks easy now. Cause you, the Minnesota is who they're projecting to get the last wild card spot at 92 points. Oh, like wow. it's just such a slog fest in the West right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> like San Jose at 54. And that almost seems generous at this point. I just love the fact that we are 15 games in the season Parker, and we can rattle off by memory, the losses, because there's only been four of them, as you said. Yeah. It's that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's not going to last too long. I don't think, no, no. Like, but let's enjoy it. W- well, once it hits five, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of, <laughs> You know, and then I have to start looking it up and I have to scroll pretty high to get to those other ones. Of course. Um, of course. Yeah. The the Canucks are in a in a great spot 
very, very happy with how things are going. Um, and looking at remaining strength of schedule, Canucks have one of the easiest schedules in the league the rest of the way mm-hmm. out. Um, mm-hmm. The Athletic sort of does that projection of who the looking at all their opponents the rest of the way and what their uh, average point is expected to be. Yep. According to this, the Canucks have the sixth easiest strength of schedule the rest of the way for the really? entire season. Yeah, I'll take it. And it, it helps because you play the Sharks a bunch. You, you play, yeah. uh, you know, you play Seattle a bunch. You play, you know, these Western Conference teams are pretty bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that uh, that does a lot of good for uh, for your strength of schedule. Yeah, and finally, don't forget, uh, as we talk about, they, they should be able to beat Calgary, Seattle, and San Jose. Those are all Pacific Division teams. So anytime we beat them, it's it's the proverbial four-pointer in the playoff race. So massive games. Even though they're not great teams, it's still big games this week for sure. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, we're at about that 11 o'clock mark. We have over 200 people in here. By the way, hit that like button if you haven't already and, and subscribe. We uh, I think we're at, what, 1650? Let's get that closer to 1700. I know there's probably some of you in here who think you're subscribed. Scroll down, see if that button's gray, and, and if not, hit it. Um, Congrats, Parker, on getting over four grand. I saw that. 4K, thank that's you. great. 4K, yeah. not four grand. I didn't get money off of it. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice if they every time you hit a thousand mark, they just throw money at you. Uh, doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, we're over 4K uh, on my channel. That's awesome. Um, we'll get this one awesome. to 2K pretty soon. Uh, oh, so yeah. Make sure, make sure you subscribed. Yeah. Uh, if we hit 2k, I will not do a rap battle. Uh, and I won't, and I will, or I won't do it if we don't hit 2k either. Uh, they got some that's awesome, still all that's going on in the chat. They have some uh, awesome names for you though. Like uh, I saw MC park and ride. And like, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm going to, I'll, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to scroll the chat after this folks. And, and, uh, I'll, uh, I'll keep track of some of those. Cause that's great. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you off air what this is all about. It's nothing bad. Sure. I promise. Yeah, sure. I know you trust me. <laughs> Clay, any parting words this fine Monday um, evening? Well, it's great to be back with you. We got to figure out what's happening next Monday because it's a Canucks game. I think I'm supposed to do game over, but I'm gonna try and get. I'll just say it out loud on publicly. I'm gonna try and get Kaya to do it so we can do our show here. But we'll figure that out. Uh, we'll let you guys know what's happening for next Monday. It's only Monday game for the next nine weeks, so thankfully this isn't a. Comments, yeah, they're uh, rare, comments. but they they put a couple of them back to back here. Um, I know, and they which put is... us in a bit of a, a pickle, but we'll, we'll figure it out. And a good news for everyone, uh, I, if Parker, if I may take a second to share, I am walking again with shoes. So no scooter, no crutches, no walking boot. I'm slow, slow and steady. But um, after three months, I'm finally able to wear a suit or at least a shirt and tie to work for the first time since August the 12th. And that'll be tomorrow. So I'm excited. And I'm looking forward to some rehab, uh, some physio starting on Saturday, and we'll see what happens from there. Excellent. Glad Thanks, to have man. you back on your feet. Thank you, brother. Um, folks, thank you all very much for tuning in. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Parker's Pucks, I guess X, whatever. Uh, YouTube, Parker's Pucks as well. You can find Clay at Canuck Clay uh, on Twitter and YouTube as well. Um, make sure you're subscribed here. Stick along for the, for the ride this season because the team's looking good. Uh, we there's more of you in here than there normally is because people are happy and it's you yeah. know it's fun to watch so uh Parker, before we go here absolutely we got it so we got a record sorry i hate interrupting you but there were a couple of super chats that came in mm. while we were so busy talking about how good the team is so spartan with another two dollar donation he's saying that besser was the one who got jay woodcroft fired lucas mentioning another good news train the nba commissioner adam silver said that vancouver is a possible future yes he did talk about vancouver montreal and I thought he said Mexico or something. I'm not sure. But I know Vancouver was in there. Thank you, Lucas. And then Zhao uh, using his membership message, acknowledging that he's a member here. So thanks to all three of you and Spartan and Lucas for your early donations as well. We always appreciate them. And even if we didn't get to them right away, thank you. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you all very much. Have a lovely Monday night. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.